This lesson, we're going to be updating and creating a report on sales data. So we've got a number of items. We've got the quantity that they were sold and the price that they were sold at, which is going to give us a total value for summary. And this is generated on the fly. So if we change any of these numbers, let's say we change item E back and we run the code, we go back to summary. It's going to clear the current summary content and provide us a new best selling item within the summary report. Go ahead and create a brand new spreadsheet and create three columns. First column will have the item. So you can just create some item names here. I've called them item A, B, C, D, E, uh, number of quantity sold. So these are numeric values. And then the price for unit is the last column, column C. So these are the numeric values of the cost per unit. Then going over to extensions, app script, let's go ahead and we're going to write our app script in order to analyze the spreadsheet data. So creating our first function and then this function is going to analyze the spreadsheet data. So give it a meaningful name. First, we need to select the spreadsheet object. So using the spreadsheet app service, we're going to get the active spreadsheet object. And that's going to return back whatever the active spreadsheet is. And this is a bound script, so we're able to do this. Otherwise, we could specify it by ID if we were selecting the spreadsheet. And then we want to select the sheet that we want to use. So this sheet uh, is going to be whatever the name of the sheet is. And currently, the sheet is just going to be called sheet one. And make sure that it corresponds with the spreadsheet where we've got the data. So in this case, I do have it named just spreadsheet one. And then, of course, you can add in a more meaningful name. So we want to first off uh, select the data range. So this is the range that our data is going to be sitting in. And we can use the sheet object and use the method data range. And that's going to return back all of the data from the active cells that have data. And now we want to return back the values that are contained within the data. So within our data range, we do the get values. And this is going to return back an array of values. We can use the logger log to output the data. So it can take a closer look at the data that we have. So run the code and our logger is going to go through the data that we have and log it out there. So we've got the data that we can use and notice it is the data from the spreadsheet uh, that we want it to make use of. So let's set a few variables that we can use. So there's one that we're going to be tracking for the analysis and we need a value for the total sales that we've got and then also the item count, which will we can use these two values in order to calculate an average per item. And then we need uh, our sales data. So the sales data is going to be where we're going to hold the data that we're going to be outputting uh, for the analysis. So what we want to do, we want to loop through all of the available data. So we're starting I and we're going to start with uh, row number two. So index value of I for the data that's being returned back. So that, that way we can miss the heading there and we're not going to be analyzing the information in the heading and we're looping through the data length. So that will allow us to capture all of the data. We need to increment the value of I. So let's do that and let's create and select quantity and the quantity value is going to be sitting within the data and using the in the, the loop value for I it's going to select the row and then we want to select the data from whatever column and in this case we want to get quantity and the quantity is contained within column B. So it's going to be within the array under index value of one. So it's going to get the second column. And then we also want to get the price. So let's select the price and we want to remove out any of the dollar signs. So let's select that value by using the data with index value of I for the row and then the index value of two for the column. And we're going to convert it to string. So using the to string method. So that way we can take advantage of string methods. And one of them that we can use is the replace. So this will replace the dollar sign with just a blank removing out the dollar sign. 
And so this is going to return back a string value and we want to convert it into a number. So let's go ahead and we're going to use the parse float and return back a floating number with parse float. And for now, let's uh, use the logger log and we can output the price. So this way we can make sure that their code is so far running properly. And we should see the numeric values of the price being output. So those are the numeric values. And we can continue with building this out. So creating a calculation for the number of sales, we can take the value of quantity and multiply it by price. And this is going to return back the total sales. And this is going to be a running total. So we're going to increment the total sales by whatever we've got within the sales amount. And then also the item count, we're going to also increment that by the quantity that we have within this particular loop. So that will give us a total number of items and a total number of sales. And then we want to use the sales data array that's going to hold the data and push in the values as we're iterating through the loop and the values that we want to add in here. And this is going to be for the report. So we're returning back the data zero, and that's going to give you the item name from the first column. And then the next one, we want to just have the sales count. So it's going to return back the number of sales. And we can get rid of this log since we know that at this point it's working properly. So as we're looping through, we're getting the sales data and our total sales. So after we loop through all of the rows, we're going to have that value. And let's uh, use that information so we can calculate out the average sales per item. This is going to be total sales divided by data length minus one. So we're subtracting the minus one from the data to account for the heading row. So that will uh, give us just the total amount of items that we have listed within the data. We also want to return back the best seller. So we can get that information from the sales data. So there, there's our sales data array. And we can use the array methods. And this one we're going to be using the reduce in order to create the summary. So we've got our max value and then the item that we're going to be returning back in the reduce method and then taking item with an index value of one and checking to see if it's greater than max with an index value of one. So this will allow us to see which item is the best seller. And then we take our item or we return back the max and we just want to reduce. So we want to take back the item with the first return value there in the array of the best seller. Let's see what we get back. So we should just get the one value back. And before we try it, let's just go ahead and we're going to add in and update this where we've got the sales. Uh, so this should return back the best seller. The best seller is going to be the one that we made the most money on. So let's run the code and that should return back. And the best seller is going to be call it item number B there. And it's returning back B. So that's good. We can continue building out the script. So we're turning back the best seller. So let's go ahead and we're going to create and select create the summary. So creating a spreadsheet for the summary. So let summary sheet and this could be a new sheet object unless it exists. Then we're going to overwrite the existing sheet. So we want to try to do the get sheet by name and selecting the sheet with the name of summary. And so if the sheet doesn't exist, then what we want to do is create it. So we'll have a condition to check to see if summary sheet is uh, being returned back as a uh, positive value. If it is, it's returned back as an object and then we can write to that sheet. And if it's not returned back, then we need to create a sheet within summary sheet. So we're just going to equal that to insert sheet. So that will give us a brand new sheet if the sheet doesn't exist. And then we just got to make sure that we give it the same name that we're looking for, for the sheet summary. And if the sheet does exist, then we use an else and we want to select the summary sheet and we're going to clear the contents of it. So that will give us the ability to write fresh 
into that, that sheet. It's going to move the code up a little bit so we can see it better. Uh, so now we've created the sheet. We're ready to generate the report. And going into the summary sheet, the one that we just created, we're going to append a row. And the first row that we're appending is going to contain the heading information. So we're doing it within an array format. So it's going to be our total sales is going to be contained within that column. And then the next column is going to be the total sales value. And then we're going to be returning back the average sales per item. And then the last row is going to be the best selling item. And then you can also calculate additional values as needed. So I'm returning this back as uh, the back ticks. So I can use the dollar sign and return back the value that we have for total sales and moving it into a two fixed position with two decimal places. So that will return back a numeric value there where we're appending the row. And then once we've created that, then we can close off the array and add it to the sheet. So let's go ahead and we're gonna see how this works. Just make sure that everything is working. So it should create a brand new sheet if summary sheet doesn't exist. Once the script finishes running, we can go in there and then we can see that we've got our total sales. So total sales is 7,900. And now we can append another row. Uh, so this is gonna be the average sales. So let's uh, add in some content there, average sales per item. And you can calculate and customize the results as needed. So instead of the total sales, we're doing the average sales per item. And this is coming from this value that we calculated up here. And again, we're gonna move it to the two decimal places. And then the last one, we're gonna also check for our best selling item. So this is gonna return back the best selling item. And this isn't gonna be a value, it's just gonna be the whatever we've got here for best seller that we've calculated. And let's add that in as best seller. And this is just a string value that we've got. So now we're ready to run the code and it creates our summary report. Once the code finishes, we've got our updated summary report. And this is from content that we have here. So if we were to update these, so let's say our best seller uh, is gonna be item number E. Uh, let's run the code again, and we'll check to see what we end up with here. And as we can see, it selected E, gave us the total sales, the average sales, and by adjusting the numbers, it generates and updates the report that's being generated.